This here is another viewer's dirty gaming PC. And in this video, we're gonna deep clean it. A very warm welcome back to PCDC folks by popular demand. Yes, I've seen your comments. I've seen your posts on X, Instagram, Facebook, etc. So many of you wanted to see this series revived and here we are. Now, if you'd asked me a few seasons ago, this system wouldn't have qualified for a deep cleaning. Yes, it is fairly dirty. It's covered with a lot of dense surface level dust. And the fact that there are mostly black components in here doesn't really help things. This will make for a pretty sweet transformation, but it is not the dirtiest we've seen. And I just want to throw that out there. I'm aware of that. My goal with this season is to slowly build up over time. So we're going to start off in episode one with a, a fairly dusty system, but nothing out of the ordinary. And we're going to hopefully build up to a very, very disgusting rig by episode 10. You know, I say that now, but I don't actually have dirty PCs lined up for episodes two through 10 yet. So if you or someone you know has a disgusting rig and you'd like a chance to have it deep clean for free in the series, be sure to click the link in the video description tied to our PCDC playlist. From there, you can submit photos and a brief description of your system and its specifications. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you are curious about this one, specifications, uh, I've let you down a bit in that department. Apparently our form as of time of filming didn't have an entry for specs, so the owner of this rig didn't have any place to actually enter them, didn't know we even wanted them. Uh, so I'm going to do my best to show you what is in here throughout the video. I can tell you for now what it does appear to have is a Ryzen-based platform. This looks like Zen 3 or older. It does look like AM4, not AM5. And I expect the graphics card, it being an XFX Radeon model, probably like a 6700, maybe 7600, somewhere in that ballpark. The case is from Corsair. I believe this is a 4000D Airflow, very fine chassis. We've got a decent power supply in here, and it looks like two sticks of DDR4. We have a beefy Noctua NHD15 here. This is going to be satisfying to clean. I will say though, we have a lot of fans in here, and uh, you guys know cleaning fan blades in particular can be very time consuming. Oh, and just one more thing before we get started, this season especially, I would very much appreciate your feedback in the comment section below. In particular, let me know what you'd like to see either added or taken away from this series. At the end of the day, I have to devote my resources as a largely one-man operation toward the things that you guys want to see, that you guys want to click on. It's part of being a YouTuber. My company revolves around clicks and views. It's how I make money. If I don't have clicks and views, I don't make money. I can't do this anymore. And PCDC videos in particular often take several days to produce from start to finish, including all of the filming, of course, the cleaning involved and the editing, which that's a day minimum sometimes too, because there's so many different clips to sift through and sync up with music and voiceovers, etc. All that to say, if your suggestions keep the views up, I'm happy to oblige. The next time you see me then, we'll be balls deep in disassembly, ready for a proper deep cleaning. Are you ready? Stay with me. If you're planning your next PC build, then consider checking out our sponsor, VIP SCD Key. Their Windows 10 and 11 OEM keys sell for a fraction of retail and will unlock the full potential of your OS. They'll also remove those pesky activation watermarks. Click the links below to get started today and be sure to use our special offer code SKGS for a sweet discount on a variety of options, including Windows 10 and 11, Pro and Home, and more. As something new for season four of PCDC, I'm going to be narrating infrequently throughout this disassembly and cleaning process. Many of you have questions about some of the methods we use, some of the tools, and some of the things that we run into on a case by case or build by build basis. And hopefully, this will serve as kind of a unique aspect of these videos moving forward, lest they become redundant. So, obviously, this phase of the video is fairly self explanatory, just disassembling things down to as far as they can go bare metal for the case and bare PCB for all of our other major components. We don't want to forget things like LED strips, of course, these small plastic panels, hard drive cages, etc. Same goes for this front panel board. Everything has been fully disassembled. This will make cleaning so much easier and also much more thorough than we'd otherwise be able to achieve.
You know what time it is. Time to whip out that water hose and give this case a thorough bath. This is the quickest and most efficient way I've found to clean a PC case like this. Heck, you can even clean some PC components with just water, so long as things like CMOS batteries have been removed ahead of time, in case you're wondering, although it's not my cup of tea. Now it's time to throw on the nitro gloves and start disassembling the platform. Of course, this cooler has to come off first, and unfortunately, the CPU stuck to the bottom of it. This can be remedied by just simply twisting the CPU off of the cooler uh, while it's flipped upside down. In order to prevent this from the start, we could run the system for a few minutes and warm up the thermal paste so that it's not so sticky. After the CPU's been cleaned, we can move on to the cooler. You'll see me using these brushes infrequently, as well as this blower. This is not a vacuum. Uh, it is simply blowing air out, and this will remove a lot of that surface level dust. Of course, mixing in isopropyl alcohol to help remove the more stuck on grime. Then we can move on to the motherboard. Like I said, down to bare PCB is important here. You get a lot of dust and grime trapped underneath heat sinks. So we wanna strip this down as far as it can go. We'll pay special attention to the socket itself. Make sure that that is fully clean. This of course being an AM4 chipset uh, means that we're going to have pins on the CPU, which is why I can be a little more liberal with how I'm cleaning around the socket. Now, I've received many questions about how we clean thermal pads. They can be fairly fragile. I just use a brush like this and kind of gently roll some isopropyl alcohol over the undersides of each. This tends to remove most of the dust. You could replace these pads outright, but they have varying thicknesses and things to watch out for. It depends on the board or the graphics card. Uh, and so just to keep things simple, I prefer cleaning them. That is one good looking motherboard, if I do say so myself. Now don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the case. You wanna make sure to dry most of this water before it does on its own because it'll usually leave water spots and things, especially if you're using just an outdoor hose. Uh, so I'm going to give it a quick scrub down with a towel to prevent those water spots from forming. Now it's time for perhaps the most frustrating part of this video, fan cleaning, always the case with these. They're just so delicate. You don't wanna put too much pressure on each of these blades. Of course, some of these can snap off if not uh, cleaned correctly. We also wanna be careful when using our duster uh, to uh, not wedge anything inside of the bearing. Same goes for this IPA. So notice I'm only spraying from above. That'll prevent a lot of the isopropyl from seeping inside the bearings, ruining that oil uh, in there, that lubrication that keeps these fans spinning without making noise. It can also destroy destroy the bearing if they aren't lubricated properly. Uh, so if I notice that that's an issue, that's something that I'll do in these videos. These fans are relatively new though, so just surface level cleaning will suffice. Finally, we can move on to something else. How about a hard drive cage? This thing has collected a ton of dust, a bit more than I was expecting. It looks a lot better now though. Of course, we can't forget about things like RAM, the drives themselves, including this hard disk drive here. I believe there were two in this system. Now 
I also noticed that almost every time I run into these Vengeance LPX modules and rigs, folks forget to remove the plastic over the logos. This is something that uh, I'm gonna take care of here because it will help make the rig look much cleaner. You won't have that plastic sheen any longer. Moving on to the SSDs, uh, this thing looks practically brand new now. So mission accomplished there, didn't take much work. And uh, of course we're gonna clean the trays as well, the Wi-Fi card and some of the plastic bits. The power supply we're not going to disassemble. I've talked about this in previous PCDC episodes. It's just not something I condone for the average builder. We can try cleaning from the inside as well just by blowing air through the grills, both up top and along the side. We'll give special attention to these cables and extensions, as well as this front panel. Of course, all of these cables will be seen at least to some extent in this rig, so we don't want to miss anything. And now it's time for the graphics card. Full disassembly, cleaning, and reassembly coming up. I'll let the video do the talking. Wow, this thing cleaned up nicely. There weren't any scratches or anything on the shrouds either, which was nice from the side. You can see it looks virtually brand new. The back plate was also relatively unscathed. Scratches aren't things that uh, I can usually tackle in PCDC videos, so it helps when these have been taken care of. And this one certainly has. And well, that's about it. We've cleaned virtually everything in this rig within reason, and it's time for reassembly. This here will just about do it. How about some glamour shots then? That was the long one, uh, about two full days. It's 9 p.m. on the second day. And uh, I obviously bake in, like I said in the narration, uh, about 12 hours at least for the water to dry uh, in the case. That's the one thing I wanna make sure of before we throw all of the other components back in here and especially before we attempt power on, which is coming up right now. This will be the final check. Make sure that the system turns on. We'll also hook a monitor up to it, make sure that it still posts, which we verified at the beginning of the video. Ah, 
It smells so much better now. There is our post, and that's about all we need to confirm here. We'll go ahead and power back down. And we do obviously have requests to run temperature tests before and after. I just want to say this once for the season. I'll probably timestamp back here, link to it if someone brings it up in a future episode. But the reason why we don't actually test temperatures before and after is because in most cases, with few exceptions, temperatures actually don't change a ton when you remove surface level dust. Now, if you have serious gunk, serious buildup, uh, especially if it affects, say, fan RPM, or if it completely obstructs airflow, then yes, you're gonna see a difference. But especially in a case like this here, where it's not extremely dirty, it's just, you know, been neglected for a few months, the temperature deltas are probably non-existent, maybe one to two degrees Celsius tops, nothing worth gawking over, and frankly, nothing worth showing off either. Just generally good practice in the long run to keep your system clean, because if it gets any worse than what you've seen in this video, then yes, potentially it could cause problems. With that, again, remember we have a link in the description tied to this PCDC playlist. If you like a chance to have your disgusting, dirty, gross, egregiously neglected system, whatever you want to refer to it as, if you want to have it deep clean for free, uh, that's what this playlist is for. As long as you're a Central Florida native or can get it to me in person, we don't accept shipments of any kind, uh, feel free to submit a form via that link. I'll get to you as soon as possible. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Give us a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. Consider subscribing if you have not already. That's that bright red subscribe button just below this video window. I'll give you a few seconds if you want to click it. Thank you very much. And check out relevant links in the video description, including one to our public Discord server and all of the cleaning gear you saw us use in this video. Thank you so much for watching and thanks for learning with me.